Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you might be. Welcome to the uh, course preview for uh, the explaining strategy course. Uh, I have started from working uh, with the uh, Kaplan and Northland Balance Scorecard framework for strategy execution since I think 2008. And then realizing that it needs to be complemented by other the concepts and theories and, and, and methodologies. I have tried to complement it with what was necessary and what was uh, considered to be uh, to be useful by the people that I have worked uh, with in various projects. And uh, that led me over the years to something that you might have seen. It's a framework that is called the strategy clockwork. I will hide myself if you don't mind. It's something that unifies both strategy formulation and strategy execution with strategic planning included. And also being being enhanced and being uh, facilitated but by a process related to experimentation, which is experimenting with uh, product design, but experimenting with strategic choices at the same time. So this is something that tries to integrate various concepts and frameworks and, and methodologies. And at the same time, it's trying to filter them and, and retain only what is logically uh, integrated uh, with each other and creates a, a traceable set of steps that uh, we uh, are taking in order to, uh, to go from, from formulation to execution and back. And we do this on, on a a uh, multi-annual cycle for the strategy form formulation and typically on an annual cycle for strategy execution. So this is the, is the, how it looks. Uh, when you see it for the first time, it looks a little bit complicated, uh, but that's the role of courses like the ones that we're uh, talking about today to allow us to understand uh, how these uh, processes and these stages are working together. This is a process and an entire strategy process, which is uh, based on the uh, Deming cycle, the plan, do, check, act, but it's uh, extended to incorporate uh, both the, the building of the strategy and then also uh, implementing it with an adaptive uh, feedback going on uh, continuously. I believe that some of you might have followed the various articles and uh, posts that I, I published uh, mainly on, on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, people have asked uh, when will I gather the you know the hundreds of, of, of posts and, and, and dozens of articles into something that may be a book or when in something that can be even an online course which glues up everything together about the strategy cycle. So the book I've started writing it some time ago, actually it's approximately two years ago, and uh, it uh, it arrived at. Uh, nearly 600 pages and the editor said you can't publish that kind of, of book you need to split it in two and I had to redesign it and actually there are two books which are in various editorial stages one it's uh, the uh, strategy clockwork which describes the, the cycles that you see on screen and the other one it's the penta model which deals with the uh, reference cognitive model used for uh, selecting the strategic choices that our strategy is based upon. It's, they represent the foundation of, of any strategy, the choices to do some things and not do others. Here is a, is a, is a course. The first one is scheduled uh, for January and a little bit in entering into February. It's not for the first time that I'm, I'm doing this. I've actually did this course in class with, with people attending in physical sessions before the pandemic. I think there were something like 24, 25 uh, sessions around 450, 500 people who attended these courses and they were delivered in, 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 in local environment, in local language, uh, and were uh, initially based only on the Kaplan uh, Norton Balance Scorecard framework for strategy execution, and then extended little by little as experience uh, uh, has been gained through projects mostly in small and medium enterprises and in small com smaller or, or medium companies. And as, as it feedback 
came back that that everything is working or something didn't work and we worked over the years in order to reach to something that seems to be uh, acceptable by real people in real companies and this is a they represent the represents cur- the curricula the the contents that we're using in uh, in the course that we're starting in online it's for the first time when i'm de- uh, delivering a course online now in order to to include this as a subject for a, for a course obviously we had to divide it into into several uh, modules and you uh, you can see in a short while on the screen uh, the, the four modules that are uh, part of of the course which are of course preceded by a kickoff session which is necessary for preparing uh, the people who attend the cohorts for being introduced to the structure of the course the structure of the sessions the combination of course and practice sessions uh, they are introduced to the uh, software platforms that we're using in the practice sessions where we uh, work with a case study and we build step by step in in a teamwork exercise the uh, strategy model and then the strategic plan model using a number of toolkits that that are part of this software application which is not a a commercial product it's something that has been adapted it was developed some time ago and adapted to fit uh, the, uh, the the requirements of supporting with a with an online platform the course that uh, that we're going to uh, to have in, uh, in in January so this is a structure we've divided the the process in four parts the first two of our uh, for strategy formulation, the, the third one is for, for the first part of the execution cycle, it's the strategic planning. And then we have the fourth one, which is about executing the strategic plan and adapting the two models that we're working with, the strategy model and the strategic plan model. So this is how the, the course is uh, structured. We will talk a little bit later about how it's organized in time on, on, on weeks, on days, and the timing for the cohorts. Uh, but I think that the most important thing that uh, would interest you about the course, it's about the framework that it's made available and it's used during the course, both as uh, explanation and discussions about various stages, as well as uh, using it in, in uh, practical exercise. So uh, let me go uh, quickly through the four modules. And uh, this allows us to discuss a little bit about what we do on the course uh, session and what we do in, in, in the practice session. As a first module, it's about uh, strategy formulation and more specifically, it's about selecting the choices which represent the bread and butter of, of, uh, of strategy formulation. The entire strategy circles around the choices that we make and that uh, characterize the strategy and defines the destination of our strategy, how the business will look once the strategy has been implemented. And in order to be able to to make those choices, we need to first look into the future as as much as we can through a a combination of uh, trends that we are exploring uh, in, in a structured analysis. And also we're looking at weak signals which anticipate future trends, but they seem to be uh, to be something that it's promising to, to to manifest in a certain way in the future. I would say deterministic kind of, of information that we have uh, that allows us to um, to extrapolate what is going on. So this is a place where we also need to look into into the real world and 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 try to experiment with. Uh, concepts about about problems that we're trying to solve and solutions that we are prototyping to get feedback from potential customers about the solutions that we would like to embed into into our strategy. So some experimentation is required, not just to 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 launch a product on the market, but to understand the combination of of problems and and solutions for those problems that can constitute the the delivery part of our strategy, which is not uh, created typically for one product. It's created for a, a series of products, a series of, of services that we're going to uh, to deliver uh, over the next uh, couple of years. And you might say, okay, so what kind of strategy do we set up? What kind of portfolio, what kind of business portfolio are we setting up? And I think that those which are subscribed to 
the Strategy Clockwork newsletter have seen an article uh, some time ago, which is called the three strategies or something like never use a single strategy. And the reality is that we need to build strategy on, on three horizons. One of them is about our current competitive advantage, and we need a strategy to extend it and to defend it with more products along the, the categories that we already delivered to the market uh, and improve the uh, productivity and uh, defend against uh, various disruptions that, that appear uh, in the market all the time. Uh, but at the same time, uh, acknowledging the fact that the current competitive advantage won't last forever, we need also to have a strategy for a new competitive advantage based probably on, on new business lines or new, completely new, new product uh, concepts and services, uh, which will need to constitute the foundation of our business once uh, the, the current competitive advantage uh, won't be able to, uh, to carry that, uh, that task forward. Uh, and then we also need to explore uh, something that is not about the next competitive advantage, but about the future ones. And we also need to incubate and experiment in order to be able uh, to prepare, uh, as uh, Rita McGrath uh, explained very nicely in one of her books, uh, waves of competitive advantages which make our strategy dynamic. So. When we create a strategy, we have a combination of things that we do about the, the current competitive advantage, some things uh, that we do about the next one, which is uh, close to taking place of the current one, and also to the future competitive advantages that would need to secure uh, the future of our company, of our organization on the long term. So this is a the concept that represents a, a good foundation for a strategy, which again is a combination, in fact, of three strategies uh, that we work on in parallel. So our strategic choices are uh, strategic choices which are more specific to the current competitive advantage and uh, others are uh, specific for the uh, next competitive advantage and also we, we might have a complete different set of choices for the future competitive advantages building on something that that it's still in, in infancy as technology as business model and and, and something that we prepare for the future so this is this is how we we work with uh, strategic choices we we make it easier for us to make choices because we use a reference cognitive model it's a penta model it's which started initially if you remember the force of generic strategies, uh, cost leadership and differentiation, and maybe stuck in the middle, uh, which evolved then. And, and uh, some of you might remember the uh, late uh, Professor Arnoldo Hux from uh, MIT School of Management, who created something called the Delta model, which uh, has more choices, more, more alternatives to the choices that, that we can use for our strategy. And uh, this has been extended to uh, something that it's called the Penta model, which also takes into consideration the fact that we need to, to consider choices uh, of adopting a, a, a disruptive innovation model or a, a blue ocean strategy model or something related uh, to, to capabilities uh, driven strategy or to resources based uh, view. So we have uh, for, for various strategy models, specific choices uh, that we can we can choose from and uh, even combine them at some extent. The Penta model, it's uh, therefore some sort of catalog of choices, uh, a, a palette of choices that we can pick from. Uh, they're not actually uh, choices, they're categories of choices that allows us to, to customize how the choice will look like in the case of, of our business and our future business. And as you you um, might know uh, there are two fundamental dimensions of strategy uh, starting from the market product fit concept uh, and we have a market which in in this case it's it's called problems to be solved so when this one dimension of problems that we're trying to solve like for instance jobs to be done of potential customers or existing customers and then we have uh, another uh, dimension uh, which is those of, of solutions that we're trying to deliver in order to best solve the problems that we're ad addressing. So we have choices for, for one dimension and we have choices on the, on the other dimension. Again, these are catalogs of choices types and therefore our analysis 
needs to uh, to tell us which of them are best positioned considering the trends and big signals and um, uh, also the, the scenarios that uh, we have to prepare in parallel with our strategy and we need to understand which combination are are providing us as the best uh, economic results over the strategic horizons that uh, we are considering and we create something which is called the strategic positioning mix Typically, these are a combination of, of choices on the problems to solve dimension with choices on the solutions to deliver dimension. And of course, it's going to be interesting within the course because we're going to play with them. And especially in the practice session, when we will we'll need to, to effectively create a strategic positioning. First of all, evaluate our, our current strategic positioning based on the information that we have in that define our case study that we are working with in the, in the practice sessions and then to create a strategic positioning mix for for the strategy for the three strategies that we are developing so uh, it's going to be an, an, a very interesting exercise and then we also have to consider at this stage and again it's it's still part of, of the first module of, of, of the course the uh, scenarios uh, that uh, we can anticipate as uh, plausible alter alternatives of the future. We are no longer looking at trends, which are more or less predetermined factors, things that have very little probability of changing. Also weak signals, which uh, seem to be stable, not that important, but they, they, they might evolve into something important with high impact, therefore, in, in the trends. Uh, but we're looking at, at uncertain things, things that can easily go uh, one way or another. And those are some uncertainties uh, are selected uh, in, into uh, into key uncertainties uh, that allows us to uh, build uh, scenarios. And we are going to use in, in, inside the the practice uh, session uh, scenario planning toolkit, which allows us to to use the, the the four scenario models. And and with this model, we're uh, going to create uh, uh, scenarios. Now, what are the scenarios used for? When we define a set of choices, we need to see what happens in each of the, in our case here, in each of the four scenarios uh, that uh, we have identified. And uh, if those choices uh, produce good results in one scenario, but also may produce very bad results in other scenarios, uh, then obviously it's something that uh, that we cannot consider as part of our strategy and it, we need to redesign our choices in, in a way that will allow us uh, to have a, at least acceptable results irrespective of the scenarios that will prevail over the, uh, the next couple of years during the uh, strategic horizon of our strategy. So this is something that we do in as part of the first module of the, of the course and uh, then we go into uh, something which becomes a little more tangible. Uh, because in order for our choices to move from the whiteboard into the reality of, of our business, we need to change something. And this is about the, the changes that we are required to make. And typically there are activities, there might be new activities that we never did before, or activities that we did but need to be reconfigured. Uh, those activities are required in order to put in practice the choices that we have made. And in order to do uh, such uh, a system of activities, we also uh, need a, a set of capabilities which are allowing us to, to perform those activities. And, and this is, is a second component uh, which is very tangible in, in terms of uh, strategy. And uh, once we defined the required activities and capabilities, we need to see which of them is something that we, we already do or something capabilities that we already have and uh, focus on those which are missing. We, we, we never did those activities, we never had those capabilities, or uh, on those which and, and uh, on those which we will need to reconfigure and uh, redesign in order to support the strategic choices that we have made. So we are focusing on, on the strategic gaps because this becomes uh, the input for the strategy execution cycle. So we need to feed into the strategic planning, a very clear set of, of strategic gaps that we have to close in order to turn our strategy into reality. But before doing this, there is one more thing that we must do. And this is the validation of, of the feasibility of our strategy. Is uh, our strategy something that we can successfully implement? Do we have the resources, human, financial, the time available? 
is our culture capable of, of accommodating the changes that are mandated by our strategy? We are. We need to look at various aspects uh, that might interfere or even deny the execution of our strategy. And if we, we identify these roadblocks, then obviously we need to go back and choose other choices and other positioning and other activities and capabilities in order to to reach by maybe multiple iterations uh, to some a strategy which is feasible that we can implement. But that there is another thing that we can uh, take into consideration, which is the viability of the resulting business model. So we need to understand, okay, we have implemented our strategy. How would, would our business look like? And then we have to understand if, if that is something viable, we will be able to survive in, in the new shape and form of our of our business, uh, or it's something that it's unsustainable from financial or from other points of view. And therefore, again, if the result is not positive, go back and redesign our strategy until we, we reach something that is feasible, it's, we can implement, and also results in a, in a business model that we have good probability of, of surviving and producing the results that we are, uh, we are aiming to, to get through our strategy. So that's, that's the second module of, of our course. And again, we have a number of toolkits that allows us to, to play with the activities, with the capabilities, uh, and also to, to perform the, the validation, uh, the, the two validations that, uh, that I've mentioned. Uh, once we do that, we, we move to the third uh, module of the of the course, which is about the strategic planning, and this is where we we enter the realms of uh, Kaplan and Norton Balance Scorecard framework for strategy execution. It is slightly improved and and, and adapted based on the uh, practice experience that has been gathered by a variety of consultants and uh, and also by myself. And we are discussing in, in this module about the aggregation of the strategic gaps that we received from the strategy formulation process into strategic objectives. This is the, what, what some people call the missing link between strategy formulation and strategy execution, being able to assemble the strategic gaps into strategic objectives. There is also a very technical and practical reason why we do this. Because in, uh, in in real implementation, we might get uh, a variety of strategic gaps about infrastructure that is missing, about uh, competencies that we don't have, about processes that needs to be developed, and they tend to be in the range of probably a hundred or more of, of strategic gaps that we would need to close uh, over the uh, several years of the strategic horizon. And it's very difficult to work with this kind of, of, of a number of, of things. It's very difficult to focus. And therefore we are identifying uh, clusters of, of gaps and that are convergent in one category or another. And uh, we assemble them in something between 15 to 25 strategic objectives, which allow us to focus better and the proof of of thousands and thousands of balanced scorecard implementations based on the Kaplan and Norton framework show us that this is the best practice in terms of building a, a strategic plan using this uh, this model. And then uh, for our uh, strategic objectives, we identify the uh, strategic initiatives, uh, which are projects uh, that are going to allow us to achieve the objectives by closing the, the gaps that have been used for creating the, the strategic objectives. And also we put in place a system of measurement, which is not necessarily a measuring processes per, per se, uh, but are actually it's used for validating the, the assumptions and the hypotheses that we have used. And we had to use uh, assumptions and hypotheses at each step of the way when building the model about the choices, about the um, uh, strategic scenarios, about the uh, implementation of the uh, results from experimentation, uh, about the capabilities required, about the analysis of the gaps, about the uh, cause-effect relationship between the strategic objectives, about the capabilities of initiatives to accomplish the strategic objectives and close the gaps. We, we had a chain of hypotheses that we had to use in both in building the strategy and also building the, the strategic model for each uh, annual cycle of, uh, of our strategy execution. So the KPIs on the scorecards are actually helping us identify 
if, if all the hypotheses have been correct and valid that we have used in our models, ideally we should have everything like in the green color. Everything would need to go smooth and our strategy would uh, produce the, the results expected. But somehow that never happens. We always have something that doesn't work, initiatives that don't, don't produce the expected results. We achieve some of the strategic objectives, but we realize that they don't have the supporting effects uh, for the other objectives. And which means that we have used somewhere along the way we have used some invalid assumptions, invalid hypotheses, and this system of measurement allows us to go back to the root cause of the dysfunction or the malfunctions that, that we have observed in our scorecards and be able to make uh, some corrective actions and, and adapt the component or the components of the model which uh, have been relied on those hypotheses. Uh, but uh, once we create the, the strategic plan for the organization, we also need to bring it down to where uh, it is executed and it is executed at departmental level in the teams of, of the organization and it's executed at individual level as a people which need to participate in the projects that represent strategic initiatives and also people who need to support the changes uh, which are mandated by our strategy and which are part of our uh, strategic plan. So we do an, a, a vertical alignment, a horizontal alignment between internal customers and internal suppliers. We do the individual alignment and also look at, at external parties because they can influence uh, the objectives uh, that we set up for, for our strategic plan. Once that is done, we can start implementing the, the plan. We start executing the, the initiatives. Of course, in the meantime, we have also looked at, at risk events and at uh, elements that constitute fragility for, for our business and which might deviate or even deny the, the results that we want to accomplish. And we need to prepare some uh, mitigation initiatives which uh, we, we need to have ready and implement if our risk scorecard or the, the resilience scorecard shows us that we need to uh, protect our objectives from this type of risk or fragility threats uh, along uh, the execution of the strategic plan. But w before we do that, that, we also need to, to understand that the strategy is not executed in, in parallel with the operation. It's actually they go hand, hand in hand. And uh, for instance, the changes that we're going to produce is going to affect the revenue or the costs. And therefore, we have to, to synchronize our strategy with the budget. We um, also need to synchronize it with the operational plans of, of sales, of marketing, of production, logistics, with the readiness plans of HR and IT and, and infrastructure. And everything needs to, to be aware of what changes are planned to be produced by our strategy along the, the next year and along the, the future years uh, in order to be able to, uh, to make the necessary adjustments inside the operational plans that guide our our operations. So once we did that, uh, we can pass to the uh, next set of stages in the uh, strategy cycle and also to the fourth module of um, our course, which is about executing the strategic plan and also about identifying the invalid hypotheses, invalid assumptions that we have used, which require us to, to modify the, the strategy, to modify the, the strategic plan, to adapt them according either to external factors, which are typically uh, monitored through a early warning system, or to hypotheses that are uh, proven to be invalid by looking at the results, at the scorecards that show us what's happening while we'll, we'll, we'll roll out the strategic initiatives or while we implement our strategy. So this part has a role of allowing us to take uh, frequent corrective actions, uh, typically uh, upon the strategic initiatives, uh, but also from time to time to understand that we might change the com certain components of our strategy or of our strategic plan, and we need to adapt them in order to respond to, uh, to changes either in the external environment or to facing hypotheses that were invalid and, and uh, we need to replace or modify them in order to continue with, uh, with an adapted strategy, with an adapted strategic plan. So this is a part uh, that allows us to close the, the loop on strategy formulation and strategy execution. In each of these modules on, on the practice part on the software platform, we have a number of toolkits that allows us to use inputs and, and generate outputs and have a logic inside each toolkit.
that allows us to build little by little the, the strategic models and to, and then to execute them. So this is the, the architecture of the course with the details about what we're going to study and play with uh, during the practice sessions. And it's something that we are going to do in eight uh, sessions in actually in four, four weeks. We have on the 10th of January, the kickoff session uh, that we're going to, to allow us to prepare for the next the four weeks. And then in each week, we are going to have one module and having a, a two hour session for the course where we go through the uh, concepts and methodologies specific to that part of the strategy cycle. And then after two days on, on Thursday, on every Thursday, we're going to have a practice session again, two hours where we're going to go through the toolkits that are specific to that module and uh, using either data that we enter or data that we have from the case study or uh, simulated data to uh, be able to construct the models uh, for the choices, for the capabilities, for the strategic gaps, for the objectives, for the initiatives and so on, as I have described for each model. So we're going to, to go then to the next week and again work on, on the next part of, of our strategy model and experiment, uh, have our hands on uh, inside the teamwork that constitutes the cohort, the class of, of people who are uh, working on the same case study. And this is done interactively during the sessions. We have uh, we have video conferencing both in the course and in the practice sessions. And uh, we're going to work as as a team to take decision, to vote for decisions in order to build the the model and the components that uh, we're required to uh, to develop. So we, we do this in in these four weeks. When the, the fourth week is finished, we have two two complete models for for strategy and for the strategic plan for the first annual cycle. And uh, we have also some simulations of uh, how we, we apply corrective actions and, and identify invalid hypotheses that would require us to change some of the uh, components of the models that we have developed. So this is how the, the, the course is uh, structured. It's not an, an, easy, uh, an easy course, it's rather, how should I say, technically challenging and, and intellectually challenging. So uh, those who uh, want to join the course to enroll, prepare for demanding experience, but uh, it's something that, that might help you uh, learn some new things. I'm sure that all of you have interacted with, with strategy processes so far, uh, but this course allows you to, to complement some of the things that you did or present you with a, with a different perspective that might be eventually better than the ones that you have used before and adopt into your methodology the uh, the parts, the components, and the, uh, the logic uh, that is part of this integrative framework. The strategy clockwork is not something that, that I have invented. I actually haven't invented anything. I just assembled together the frameworks and the concepts and the methodologies uh, that exist in, in various places of the strategy realms and try to put them in a very logical structure that allows us to follow a deterministic process and allows us to clearly define the, the strategy and the strategic plan and then execute. So this is what we're going to, uh, to do in the course in January. And uh, we are doing this on using uh, three cohorts, I mean three teams, which are specifically set for each time zone and, and region. Uh, so we have one for the uh, Asia Pacific with uh, people from, from India and from Australia and from, from Japan and from other countries in the region. Uh, then we have a second cohort for the Europe, Middle East and Africa. They are uh, scheduled at time during the day, which uh, is relatively comfortable to the people in that region, depending on the time zone that, uh, where they are allowing them to attend the sessions uh, typically within business hours. The third uh, cohort is for you, those, most of, of those who are attending the current session, because again, it's for times that span the, the areas from uh, the Pacific coast to the Atlantic coast for, for, all, for, for all countries, allowing you to attend the course sessions in, at, at comfortable times. Of course, this is not mandatory. Uh, for instance, I have at least one person in Europe who said, I prefer some sessions in the evening. Therefore, can I join uh, the Americas cohort? Of course, that's uh, very possible as long as there are still still seats available. Uh, right, the cohort B for EMEA, it's uh, roughly half full because we have classes that can't exceed 
uh, 20 people in each cohort. And the, the cohort C and A are a little bit behind, but there are people who are en enrolling already. And there is a, a certain financial benefit uh, for the enrollment before December 1st. There is a, a 30% discount. We have a, a new uh, course website, which has been substituted so far by the registration and enrollment pages on the learning platforms that we're using. It's called uh, Disco, disco.co. And uh, uh, we have descriptions there for the curricula, for the structure of the course, for the cohorts. And uh, now we have gathered everything in a single site. It has the, the links uh, to the uh, registration and to the enrollment in, in, in your cohort or in other cohort if you want to, uh, to, to pick different times for, the, uh, for attending the, uh, the course. So this is a registration page uh, where you, again, you, you can use a, a discount code and uh, get a, a better price for the uh, enrollment fee. So thank you very much for your time and, uh, and have an, uh, a nice uh, afternoon or, 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 or evening.